Hey guys, it's Missy Wilson. I'm here with Gary Morris. How are you today? I, I'm great. I'm out on a beautiful ranch out in uh, close to Lubbock, Texas. Oh, that's awesome. How's the weather there? Well, we uh, we got the truck about 30 minutes ago. It was 64 degrees. It's dropped to 40, and it's supposed to get down in the single digits here shortly. So, oh, but it's uh, beautiful. Nice. I was going to say, I, I hear that it's supposed to be real cold tomorrow, but everybody today seems to have a really nice day, so that's good. Um, yeah. You, you've had a really, you've had a phenomenal career, and I, I'm so obsessed with it because I just, you act and you sing and you just do everything. And I want to know, I, I know you've written some amazing songs too, um, but I want to know about your Broadway experience. What do you want to know? I just want to know what, I mean, how, it just seems so easy for you. You played Jean Valjean, right? In, in Le, I always screw up the title when I try to pronounce it. It's Les Miserables. Is that how you pronounce it? Les, Les Miserables. Uh, yes, Les Miserables. Okay, because it's just spelled funny. So I always want to, I always want to continue, you know, with, with the rest of the letters there. And I know that it's wrong, but how, how, well, yeah. how was that? That is one of my most favorite musicals. Well, it's a great musical, but when I did it, the, the country DJs across the country were saying, uh, Gary's playing Dean Valjean and Les Miserable. John <laughs> Valjean and Les Miserables. So, but, you know, I bet you live with that. <laughs> that's what I was getting at. I'm like, that's, you see things and you just want to say them how they look, and it's just, it's a problem I have. And my our listeners know that I have messed up so many names. It's not even funny. <laughs> but, no problem. But that experience, being on stage in, in such a, an amazing, you know, um, play, what what was that like, that experience? Well, I, I, you know, the, the coolest thing about it, maybe, is that, that everybody in New York on Broadway is at the top of their game, from your stage manager to your, your lighting director to your audio guys and all, of course, the performers, because everybody wants to do it. And that wasn't really my dream in life. You know, I was like, I thought I'd be a playing professional baseball or something, but right. I wound up, you know, uh, singing. That was my gift. So uh, I didn't think much about it. I went to see it. I knew they were casting for Val John, and I went, well, I can do that. <laughs> and uh, there you go. They, uh, uh, they had me come sing for them in New York. And then they had me come back and they brought the French writers in and the, the producer Cameron McIntosh. And uh, I mean, I mean to tell you the truth, it's a, a little known story, but but uh, I uh, I sang for them twice. Mm -hmm. And the second time they came up to me and they they offered me the touring company. And I said, I you know if I want to go to Chicago, right. I'll take my band. I'm not really interested in doing the <laughs> touring show. And, and they said, well, we have promised the role. Uh, to Tom Wilkinson's understudy. And I said, okay, well, if anything down the road, you need somebody to come in, I think I could do the role. And they, they said, all right. Three weeks later, I got a call. And uh, it, it was my agent. He said, they want you in New York. And I, I said, I've already been there twice. The same form. I'm not going back. He said, no, no, no. They want you to come. You open in three weeks on Broadway. I went, what happened? He said, well, the understudy died of a cocaine overdose this oh, morning. And you have three weeks to learn Les Mis and open on Broadway. So I I was in it doing my own draw term and I packed up the next day, went to New York, learned it, opened three weeks later. Wow. That's incredible. And that just that's got a that's just got a huge hold a huge part of your, you know, your heart there too. I mean what a memorable experience you had. That's, that's really great. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I traded one for the other because I did blame Mills Country Radio wouldn't play me anymore. So other than <laughs> the fact that I had a whole bunch of top tens and five number ones in a row, uh, I had right. no place to get new music played. But I continue to write and uh, and go out and have kind of a nucleus of people that, I mean, I just played a place in right. Brownsville, Texas three days ago. And, you know, we were in a 600-seat room and great and I'm playing I'm, I'm playing in Lubbock tomorrow night and that ends my Christmas tour right right and, uh, mm -hmm. just in time now I'll be going, going back to my ranch 
See, that's awesome. I love that. Now, what, do you have animals like cows on your ranch at all, or no? Uh, no, only in the summer. We have a, we just have a few heads. It's, it's not a big place. It's not like a ranch in Texas. Yeah. It's more like a, a, a ranch in downtown New York. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Oh, my gosh. Um, no, the reason why I asked about cows is I'm moving to Nashville in approximately 11 days, 10 days, I think now. And I, I can't wait. I just cannot wait. And I want to get a cow. I want to have a property where I can have a cow. Um, because they're like big, giant dogs. And I just want one as a pet. I don't want to eat it. I want one as a pet. And I was just curious. What you ready. need to do is you get one cow and you name it Curd. And then when people say, uh, <laughs> hey, you have, you have cows? Just this Curd. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yes, I will do that for sure. That's well my uh, daughter might argue with me. She wants to name it cappuccino for <laughs> whatever uh, reason. But oh my gosh. So so let's go back to your career. You've written some amazing songs and you've written one that everybody under the sun knows, whether they, you know, know country music or not, because you wrote Wind Beneath My Wing. And Well now, now I hate to correct you on Oh that. okay. I had the first record on it, but two of my buddies were actually the guys that penned the song. Oh, okay. Larry Henley and Jeff Silbar. And then it won, it, won, it won Song of the Year for me in 1983, mm-hmm. but that's given to the guy who sings it and the writers. So oh. I thought that if I'd have written it, this ranch I'm riding on right now, I would have fought. <laughs> right? Um, okay. <laughs> I thought you wrote it, but either way, there's some really cool facts about that song, and you did an amazing job with it. But the... One of the coolest things about it, and I don't know if most people know this, but it's like the second most popular song at funerals. And my my neighbor and I were just talking about that song yesterday, and she was like, they played that song at every funeral I've been to. And I told her about, you know, the, the little strange statistic there, and she was like, yep, that's true. And it really is. I mean, it's such a beautiful song, but it's also kind well, of... I, I can't, yeah, I can't tell you how many people just have played my record of it at funeral. Yeah. Or, or, and, and also at weddings and at bar mitzvahs right. and at graduations. And it's like unbelievable. It's just a, a, a magical piece of material, and I'm really lucky to be able to hang my hat on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I think that, yeah, I think that anybody, I, I love that song. Everybody knows that song, and, and your version of it is, is very well played, very well known. And something that a lot of people may not know about you is you, I mean, with the acting and everything, I told you I'm obsessed with your career. You've had recurring roles on Designing Women, which I watched my entire childhood. And I've been watching General Hospital since I was three years old. So you've had recurring role on that as well. And I am so jealous of you because you got to be on set with everybody. And I love everyone. And what was that like for you? There's so many people on those shows and so many people you're dealing with that I imagine it's a very different cool. experience. Oh, it was cool. And, and also, I did the Colby's. And on the Colby's right. was, you know, was uh, Charles and Heston. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they were all fun. But let me tell you a really funny story, uh, if you got time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Charles and Heston, who everybody would know from uh, Ben-Hur mm-hmm. and the Bible, big old movies. Uh, <clears throat> we're, we had a softball team. Uh, and like Hill Street Blues had one, the Colby's had one. I mean, all of the wow. sitcoms had one. We kind of played. And so we're we're sitting in the dugout, and across the field, out the parking lot, the the figure is starting walking towards us. Well, it was it was Dalton Heston, and he was wearing his robe and carrying his staff from the Ten Commandments <laughs> the movie he made, and he walked up to our dugout. Left us, then walked back to his vehicle and left. It, it, just the sight of him coming. Oh my gosh! That was so cool. But yeah, I had a great time. And you know, I've been designing women. I was, I played a doctor, and I had to give Dixie. You know, to give Dixie a hysterectomy, me, and you know, I've just been all kinds of fun stuff. Right. I don't right. really consider myself an actor, but I've had you know some pretty cool things. Doing the doing uh, Lava Lamp with Linda Ronstadt was cool. That was really fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I You have so many awesome stories, I know, just tucked away in there, and you, you shared a couple of them with me, and I'm so excited, and I cannot, I, I wish I had been there to see the looks on all of your faces when Charlton Heston walked up 
too. With this stuff. Oh my gosh, that that had to be one of the most amazing things he's ever experienced. That, I mean, nobody who, yeah, who does well, that. <laughs> you're so young, you wouldn't even remember it. No, I love Charlton Heston. Are you kidding me? I I watched those movies with my grandparents all the time. Like that was my thing, and my grandmother loved him. My mother loved him. Oh my gosh! So yeah, I know Charlton Heston, and I would have died had he been there in front of me like that it just would have been amazing it would have been one of the greatest moments ever I mean how many people could say that he walked up to them like that and blessed them (laughs) like that's just the coolest thing ever I I love it I love it so what do you have coming up I know you just said you you you're just done with your um your your end of the year tour your Christmas tour what are you doing now what do you have coming up well I'll be in the studio in the first part of next year I'm I'm doing a couple of projects uh, uh, one is uh, called One Plus One. It'll be me and uh, one other person, whether mm. it's a instrumentalist or a vocal vocalist on each track. I'm just changing out. I'm right. talking to people. And another one is, uh, um, I haven't got a name for it. It might be called Miss Kit or something like that. And mm-hmm. There's a lot of songs and demos that I got that I wrote that never made records or where the demos were actually better, in my opinion, than the record was. Because there were a lot of, back in the 80s, when, uh, in the early 90s, when my records were playing, there were a lot of restrictions at, at the radio level. Right. I mean, your, your drum sounded like a tambourine, and your guitar sounded like a ukulele, and all the stuff they did, because, because radio said, well, that doesn't sound like it's country. Now, you find it today, I mean, they can put anything they want on it. Exactly. I don't like most of it anyway. So, uh, but <clears throat> so those are the two projects that are coming up, and I'll be I'll be touring. Um, I'm playing performing arts centers and some theaters, and uh, playing a few big festivals. Oh, that's that's great. So, I hope that you end up back in Nashville to play because if you do, then I'll be able to come out and see you. Cause I definitely want to I I, I want to watch you perform. I think that would be amazing. But when you have more information on what you have coming up and when you have stuff coming out, you have to promise me that you let us know so that we can promote it for you. Because, like I said, you you definitely are a very talented man. And, you know, I I know that I got caught up in in a lot of your experiences because I've been, you know, just researching you. And I'm just obsessed with all the amazing things that you've done. Um, But I, I want everybody to know who you are and get to know who you are because you are so talented in, in so many different areas and I definitely think that the world you know need, needs to know that they need to, they need well, to see you thank you very much I probably will be playing uh, the Franklin Theater uh, oh I love that uh, place yeah it's a fabulous room to play sometime mm-hmm. in, in the spring I've got nothing on the dates on the calendar for anywhere around Nashville but right. probably I've, I've played there I love that room. I've played there two or three times. It's always Absolutely. sold out really quickly. It, you know what? It's one of the most beautiful theaters ever, and their green room is stunning. I love their green hey. room. It's really pretty. So, um, yeah, I, I love it there. So, yeah, I would definitely come see you there. I think that would be I think that would be fabulous. Maybe we can get you on camera and do an on-camera interview, too. Um, okay, that would, that would be great. That would be great. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's the weekend and you're busy and you're out doing what you got to do, but I really appreciate you taking the time to call me and, and do this interview. Um, it, it speaks volumes of your character and who you are, and I just appreciate you very much. So thank you. Thank you, Don. Look forward to seeing you. Absolutely. All right. Well, you have a good rest of your weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.